We're going live. Hello. Hi. Let's see if this audio is working. Before we get into it, somebody from the Navajo Nation picked up a wallet, which is incredible. Thanks, Mojo. All right, let's see if this is working here. Give me one second before I get into it, but we're gonna talk about, um, what are we gonna talk about? What's the best leather? <laughs> I thought we'd go with a light subject today. <laughs> Hang tight, one second. I wanna make sure everything sounded good here. Yeah, it seems like it's working. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, Mojo's here from Navajo Nation, which is super awesome. Uh, and we got a little bit of a different setup today. I don't know if you care, but uh, I'm trying some new stuff uh, because I had an issue at my home with some water in my basement, so I had to move a lot of my try, try to move a lot of my streaming stuff uh, to here, so we can do more videos and interviews with people from the workshop instead of in my uh, now defunct basement. But Jared Smith is here. Mike Cruz is here. Uh, Mojo again, thank you so much uh, for supporting us, Mojo. Uh, who else we got? Prasis and Mohit's here and Waveland Avenue again. What's up, Floyd? Floyd, uh, if you're the Floyd I'm thinking of, um, you got some special treats coming your way. Uh, we, I actually took some photos of your stuff yesterday. That was supposed to send to Matt and I forgot to, but I have incredible photos to share you of, of your new stuff. Uh, Justin's here. Meow, uh, Tao is here. Okay, awesome. And we're gonna, so again, what, what I wanna do today, it's been a while since I've come to hang out and, and chat with you guys. So number one is, if you have any questions about anything, that's why I'm here. I love the questions. And so please shoot them at any moment. Anytime you have a question, just leave it in there and I'll do my best to answer you. And then what we're going to look at today is I wanted to <laughs> give that light subject uh, question, which is not light at all, is what's the best leather? And that's sort of a trick question. So we'll get into that. What makes a leather good? I think is probably a more appropriate question. And then I've got some, some really special stuff. I'm looking at five incredible pieces that I've never seen before and leathers we've never seen before and uh, items we've never seen before. And I also have uh, some new belts to look at. Uh, we've got a Chrome Excel belt in color eight Chrome Excel now, which seems to be really popular. I announced that yesterday and uh, everybody behind me were packing up all your belts right now. And then I've got a uh, maybe 20 other incredible looking wallets that are all semi custom stuff that we'll look at together. Uh, but let's see what you guys are chatting about first, because I saw a good question here from Meow Tao, which I hope I got that right. So what's the closest leather to Shell Cordovan? And that's a really tough, and I will answer your question, but there's sort of a caveat is Shell Cordovan is very, very unique because of what it is made from, because it's made from that dense fiber membrane underneath the skin of the animal of the equine of a horse butt. It's this really dense fiber layer that's unlike any other leather. So it's kind of hard to compare something to it. And maybe we can compare the features of the Shell Cordovan to other stuff. So one of the features that people like about Shell Cordovan is how bright and shiny it is. You can get a bright and shiny look on pretty much any leather by applying a brighter top coat to it and then ironing it smooth with a lot of pressure and a lot of heat, you can create a really glassy look. Sometimes that additional pressure and heat pressed onto a leather will cause the leather to have a poor break, which is what Shell Cordovan is really great at is having an incredible break. So a leather that's similar to uh, shell cordovan for the break would be any treated leather, any impregnated leather where they're actually putting resins inside, uh, underneath the grain layer. They'll actually impregnate that, that skin with additional resins and it gives it a really incredible tight break. It can look a little fake sometimes. 
another leather that's probably closest in terms of break is most calfskin. Some of the stuff that you see Alden using has a really tight break, but it's still quite a bit different than the shell. When I talk about the break, I'm talking about where the you take your, your toe of your foot and you sort of flex it. You start to see um, this sort of fine pebbling happening on most leathers, but the shell cordovan never develops these sort of crease marks. So that's incredibly unique. In terms of feel, I guess like the the richness and the waxiness and the oiliness of the shell is kind of comparable to the Chrome XL. Um, and I'm certain there's other leathers that are hot stuff with a lot of waxes and oils that have a similar feel to the shell Cordovan. And I suppose the other thing would be the veg tan character. I'd say the closest would be the Dublin leather, which is tanned with the same exact tree barks as the shell Cordovan. That's a, that's a tough one too, because the, the Dublin is very grainy and very textured where the shell is very flat and smooth. So it's almost like if you could make a weird Frankenstein out of all those leathers I mentioned, you get something kind of like shell, but you're still never going to have any any leather remotely close to all those features together. It's just such a unique membrane under the skin that you can't really get it from any other animal. But that's a good question. I, if I was going to find a leather to be a full shell replacement and say horses didn't exist, there's a leather that Horween does, which is a treated leather um, with some additional uh, resins inside of it that give it that really tight break and a really flat, smooth finish. I think they call that leather Dressner, which is sort of a new product for them. That's probably the closest. There's a leather called Dressner, and Horween has some other variations on the Essex leather that's been treated that kind of has a similar vibe to Shell, but you're never really going to get the same like one for one thing without using the, the horse butt. But that's a great question. Justin Cones here, John Sanchez. Good to see you. Um, can you give me any hints on plans for anniversary sale? Yeah, I can. Uh, so I've been sort of struggling in my personal life with some events going on in my home. We had a lot of rain here in Chicago and, had some water back up in my basement. So I've been taken away from that a little bit. And then next year, I just, or next year, next week, I just got the surprise notice from my child's daycare that they're taking the whole week off. So I'm gonna be a little limited on time. So this weekend, I'm gonna try to prep out a lot of stuff for the 10 year anniversary. And what, what I wanna do is have another site-wide sale where we'll have a discount for anything that's available on the website. I'm planning to start that early next week but on the end of the week, on Friday next week, we're gonna to try to launch, and I'm hesitant to commit to it because of my time constraints, but I should be able to get some really special 10 year, like special edition 10 year wallets up on Friday. And we're gonna to plan to do that every Friday for the whole month. In addition to that, I'm gonna sneak up some special Easter eggs on our website randomly throughout the week. Uh, and these items are gonna be I was just got off the phone with Skip Horry, and I think people are going to freak out. I'm freaking out by some of them because there's just such unique leathers that I've never seen before. And what I really want this to be is a celebration about the material. And we want to show how many different looks we can get, how many different leathers we can get, how many different colors we can get, and sort of make that celebration happen in the medium of, of wallets and other small leather goods. And again, like there's maybe 20 item, 20 leathers and different shell cordovan looks that I've never seen before. And I'm trying my best to not look too much at them. So I'm excited to see them with you guys for the first time. So you can look forward to that on Friday. I do have five things on the table here right now that will give you a hint to that. And in fact, these five things I'm gonna offer you up right now. So it'll be first come first serve for five really special wallets. I've, I've never seen this design before. Uh, and we're just kind of trying new stuff and it. They're pretty cool, but we'll, we'll get to that too. Great question. Uh, anniversary say we're going to try for, to start the new items on Friday, but we'll be doing a site-wide discount. Um, probably starting on Tuesday after the uh, holiday weekend, Scott Colley from Southern Illinois. Thanks for coming, Scott. And my dad went to SIU and uh, down in Carbondale. So 
I'm familiar with your end of the state. John says, end of this month, I believe it's the 10th year anniversary. We're going to do the whole month of July, try to celebrate our 10th anniversary as well as celebrate the leather together. Quan, 1993. What's up, Quan? He says, thanks for the replacement Apple Watch, man. No problem. And that's our guarantee for everything we do is, you know, if you have any issues, just reach out to us. We're never going to try to fight you on a problem you're having. We just want you to have a the best thing that's going to last you forever. So if you ever have any issues, just let me know. This is not a new camera. It's just that you've got more depth against that wall where before I was standing against the other wall. Uh, you couldn't really see that much. I love this camera, but this is one I've been shooting everything on in 2021. I got this in January. It's a Canon uh, R6, which I couldn't suggest enough. It's a really good camera. What's up, Jonathan Lux and Cliff's here. All right, maybe you guys can sound off before we go into this topic. Just tell me what's the best leather. And you might have a struggle to answer that question because you appreciate many things, but also you probably are gonna start thinking about the leathers you like and then thinking them in different functions. So that's sort of where I land on this question, which I get asked a lot people say, you know, what's the best leather that you have? And it's kind of tough to answer. It really depends very heavily on a couple different things. I like to make the analogy, and it's probably overused type of analogy, but making a car analogy about it or a vehicle analogy. So if you're just like me, I have a three mile commute to work and I don't need to go really fast because it's stop and go traffic. And I don't need to, tow a, a 40 foot trailer behind me uh so i can get by with a small little go-kart <laughs> you know i don't need a huge beastly vehicle and that gets me here great and it's cheaper because gas is lower and i can park in small spaces an analogy for leather is like you might not need the most intense heavy duty thing for all purposes and it's kind of the same uh for for every leather function so when people ask me what's the best leather, it's it's really impossible to answer. But we can go through some performance aspects. So right now I'm wearing, um, maybe I can just show you. Will this work? Boom. Right now I'm wearing some uh, Grant Stone diesel boots, which I, I totally love these. They're awesome. These are a little bit fashion-y, right? Sorry, I forgot about the microphone. So these diesel boots are incredible, but they're they're like a good hybrid between form and function. I probably wouldn't want to wear these hiking up Mount Everest, right? I certainly wouldn't. They're they're not very performance based in that way. But I also I probably could get away with wearing them at a uh, at like a wedding or something. But they're probably quite a bit too casual for that. And a lot of that has to do with the leather and then the construction. So. The Chrome Excel is pretty versatile. You can kind of dress it up and kind of ca make it a little bit more casual. Yeah. Is it the best? I mean, it depends on that, like where you're going to wear it, how it's going to be used. Another thing about Chrome Excel, people love Chrome Excel, and I do too. Let me reset this. So I love Chrome Excel. It would be a, a really terrible idea to uh, put your the leather inside of your car as Chrome Excel. And you might wonder why, because it, it seemed like a good idea on the, on the face of it. The, the Chrome Excel has so much oil in it that it will actually migrate the oil off of the seat in your car onto your clothing, and it might discolor your clothing. So Chrome Excel is not really good for upholstery. The other thing about Chrome Excel is it tends to dent and scuff and scratch pretty easily. So that might not be great for your car either, unless you love that beat up sort of antique look, which I, which I like. So Chrome Excel is great for some things and maybe not great for others. Same with the Shell Cordovan. Shell Cordovan actually has a very awful uh, slit tear. Uh, in fact, most veg tan leathers have a pr pretty poor slit tear uh, strength. That means if you cut a little slit into the leather and, and rip it, it will just rip like a piece of paper. The Chrome Excel, on the other hand, has an incredible strength to it. Um, so there's different factors like that. But I think the biggest one 
and maybe this is me being in the wallet world and sort of the boot and footwear world is how does it look? So the best one in terms of looks is the one you like the most. And for me, it, it's hard to say. So like some days I, I look at the Cordovan. In fact, I look at it every day, but I just look at some pieces of shell and go, that is the most incredible looking thing I've ever seen. And then I put a piece of Dublin next to it, for example. And I go, man, that Dublin is so cool. It's just so random and unique. I just absolutely love it. And that's the beauty about this is you don't have to pick one. You can sort of pick any of them, right? And you can have more than one pair of boots. And that's not to say that you should go out and buy every leather and a pair of boots, but that's why there's different tanneries in the world. And that's why Horween Leather, who we buy leather from, makes an infinite amount of different leathers because there is no one best thing. And it just really depends on what you like and what, where it's going to be used and what you're trying to get out of it. That's sort of my, my spiel there. Um, Quan says, any future plans for a black Dublin belt? I actually have one black Dublin belt that might be available right now. But that we don't have the leather, so I, I don't want to commit to that. But if you want to send me an email, Quan, uh, we can see if that size would fit you. I think we maybe have two. Mohit says, could you show Cordovan cream on other leathers? Just got some Grandstone boots and Kudu leather and was wondering if it would be okay to apply Saphir Cordovan cream on it. Yeah, you can totally use the Saphir on, you could use it on any leather. It's gonna give you a different look. I hesitated because if you put it on a suede, it's gonna fill in the nap of the suede and become a little bit more smooth, which you might not like on a suede, but you could put it on there. It's not gonna hurt anything. The thing that the Saphir Cordovan cream does really well is it, it really fills in um, the grain or any scuffs and scratches that might be in there. There's a lot of wax in that product that tends to level out any grain layer. And then because it's also a harder wax and an emulsification of the wax with other materials, it gives you a brighter shine. So the Saphir is good for filling in and making bright you can totally use it on uh, on those kudus, and I think you'd get a nice look. Another product that, that we also sell and many people sell is the Venetian Shoe Cream. You'll get a similar look on the Venetian Shoe Cream. I find that the Saphir has a little bit more fill to it, and it's a slightly brighter look. I'd say that that's a more specific look, that brighter look, uh, where the Venetian Cream is a little bit more versatile. You could use them interchangeably but you're going to get a brighter more filled in appearance with the saphir with the saphir cordovan cream uh, andrew wilkins really good question i was also just talking to the tannery about getting some arabica lux so andrew says are you guys planning on getting arabica lux anytime soon i'm interested in getting some aldens with it but wanted some experience with something smaller for a while i love that you said that because you and i are on the same wavelength i was supposed to have a chat with uh, Jim and Matt from Aldwine earlier this week and I had to cancel on them because my house is flooding <laughs> but next week I'm planning to chat with, with them and by that time next week I think we're supposed to chat Wednesday I'm expecting to have a side of the Lux Arabica the same exact leather that Alden uses I'm expecting to have that in the shop and what I wanted to do was to make some small items to either give away or, or sell for an, ex, an, an inexpensive price to get that leather into people's hands. Because I think you and I are feeling what most people are feeling, which is like, you see this new leather from Alden, you get really excited, but it's so hard to tell that leather or any leather what it's all about until you see it in person. Uh, so I, I'm on the same page with you. We wanna get some Lux Arabica into the world so you can decide if that's something you want on your feet. Um, it's a really interesting leather. And in fact, I also have a, um, I have a meeting scheduled with Nick, Nick Horween who developed that product. He actually originally developed the Lux product for a jacket company called Shot. And I wanted to go through with him just sort of a breakdown of how he came up with that leather and what the process was like. And then I'm gonna walk through the tannery with him. Hopefully we can do all this um, to show us how he made that leather and what the thought process was behind it. But I really like the look of the Lux. It's, if you imagine a tumbled leather that pebbles up 
in a very fine way, a super soft feel, um, but it has this really different sort of, it's, it's the break where the grain layer has sort of flexed a bit. It's, it's like sugary and sparkly. It's got this really subtle sort of sparkle to it without being like too pixie dust. It's, it's like a cool sort of shiny look, but without being filled in and smooth. It's, it's very interesting leather that I don't think anybody's made anything like that before. But that's a great question, uh, Andrew. So hopefully I can hook you up with that. Scott Colley says, you're in Carbondale. I love my Johnny the Fox, but the Herbie is my current favorite style. I like the thin profile, even when stuffed with eight to 10 cards. Yes, and uh, I totally agree. In fact, do we have a tall Herbie for me? Aha, uh -huh. the other thing I was supposed to mention today was I'm going to wear a new wallet. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. All right, this is my new wallet. <laughs> and I've been wearing, so I should have been doing better updates on the natural Latigo. I'm so pumped about the natural Latigo. I realize that this light of a color is maybe not for everybody, but many, many people picked up the natural Latigo Herbie on pre-order. I'm pretty excited with how mine is worn in. It's just picked up an incredible amount of color and it's got a nice bright, uh, if I can try to demo it here, it, the luster has changed. It's shiny now where it started off a little bit more dull and matte. It's just a great looking leather, how quickly this is worn in, um, which is why I haven't swapped it out. But I got so excited about the M's Chrome XL a couple weeks ago that I almost switched away from the Latigo before giving it a, a nice wear test. This is an M's Chrome XL tall Herbie. And a couple people had messaged me about having their that we did a pre-order on this as well for the the normal fat herbie without this uh tall extension to the top we did a uh, pre-order on those and a lot of people picked those up too and some people already have them it's uh, this leather is awesome and a couple people messaged me about a tall herbie and i thought it was a really exciting idea just because this m's chrome XL, and this is called natural m's it's a little confusing, so I won't go into it, but this is made on a horse front that has incredible wild ranging character. And I feel like a large context on most leathers, especially with a natural character to them are better. So a huge context like this, I thought was a wonderful idea. So I, when we made those, I think two people picked up tall Herbies in the M's Chrome XL. So when those two people picked up theirs, I added one on for myself and, and this is it here. The other cool thing about the tall versions of the Herbie and the Tony are you get this continuous look through the inside. So you don't see any reverse pieces or flesh out pieces. I, I think that's pretty neat too. And I've never worn one of our tall Herbies before. Fat Herbie's my favorite, especially in a thin leather like this M's Chrome XL horse. I think this might be the dream for me. Um, so I'm going to load this one up too and start wearing it. I'm kind of curious to see how this, this tall bill slot works out because I've been, <laughs> we got 10 year anniversary for the last 10 years or so. I've more or less always worn a Herbie. I'd have worn a Capone. I've worn, a, I've worn all of our wallets, but I keep going back to the Herbie cause I love it so much. Um, so I got a new wallet that I'll load up, but this has been about a month. I'm really excited about the natural Latigo. And I've been missing some chat here. Let's see. What's the most durable leather? So th that's a great question, Jonathan. It's something for it to touch on. There's sort of a balancing act between toughness and durability and natural appearance. Because I can apply plastic to your leather and it's going to be supremely durable. But it's not going to look like leather. It's, it's almost like, what's the point? And a lot of, there's a lot of leather in the world like that, that is just very, very heavily finished. We are sort of the total opposite of that world, but you can make, it's a tough question because it depends on what you're looking at, but most often a chrome tanned leather that has a full and maybe you impregnate it with some resins and then you also like paint it with a plastic or roll coat plastic on it. 
that's going to be a really tough, resilient piece of leather. It's not going to scratch. It's not going anywhere because it's, it's basically not leather at that point. And then the other end of the spectrum is like a no finish. We call it a naked leather or a piece of crust leather. Maybe it's in a veg that's just going to change over time. That's the other problem with full finishing is you're never going to be able to develop a patina on a piece of plastic as opposed to those oils and waxes with no finish layer above you get much more dramatic shift of colors. So there's sort of this balance between performance and like how beautiful the thing is in the leather world, at least, but that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I missed some comments here, but Quan says Dublin's best leather. That's pretty nice leather. There's some functions you might not want Dublin in. It tends to, what's the word? Hydro hydrophobic. It soaks up water. It doesn't repel water. And that's very characteristic of most veg leathers is it wants to pull leather in. That's why a, a word like chamois was developed to like dry off your cars. It sucks up the leather. And most veg leathers tend to do that. Mojo says, I really like the color, uh, color on the number four. Does monogram pop on the color number four or number eight or natural shell, would you say? Uh, to quickly answer that, it will show on all of them and it will have a slight texture as well. It will be most dramatic, perhaps more interesting on the natural shell. And he said, I'm thinking of a second bugs and enforcer, but not sure which color would be better for monogram. I wouldn't worry as much about the monogram as I would worry more so of like, what do you like? I love the color four for a bunch of years. That was my favorite shell color. Right now, my favorite shell color is Amaretto and that's subject to change. I just think they're totally beautiful. I also really like natural shell for patina uh, and color. It's a classic. So you can't really go wrong with those, but I would just pick which ones like you look at and you go like, that's, that's for me. And then not worry about the monogram so much. If you're worried about a monogram, we can always take some scrap and do a little demo of how that monogram would look before we make a whole thing for you. And that's no problem at all. Just let us know. He said, I ordered black shelf, uh, Frank the Enforcer and bugs. What would be the best treatment for the leather and how can I best take care of it to last, uh, to have it last long? Great question, especially on a black shell. In fact, any leather we do, our general guidance is don't do anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but basically what we find is the leather has a, a really, the, the leathers that we choose to make product from are designed with durability in mind and longevity in mind. And they're even more specific than that is we're trying to design them to look better the more you wear it. To me, that's a really special thing about leather is it's one of the, I, I have a hard time finding other examples of things that you can use every day that change and get more interesting. Um, so that's why I like leather. I haven't polished, I don't polish most of my stuff. Having said that, you can, you can polish them and sort of maintain things. The one thing that I will suggest, you can kind of see it that happening on my Herbie already. Uh, see, uh, oh, here. See how my credit cards are uh, poking out a little bit? The raised letters and numbers on your cards will push up the leather. And then when you close it and it rubs together like this, it tends to like shadow and highlight where those impressions are. A good tip, which I don't obviously follow, is to flip your cards backwards where you can really minimize that. Uh, the other thing is dust and dirt that accumulates inside a bifold like this. When those bits of dust and dirt sit on each other, especially on the cordovan, and it rubs like this, the dust and dirt will actually scratch the leather and the shell is my microscopically abrasive to itself. So shell on shell will actually scuff itself if you rub it like this. So what I suggest to people, flip your cards backwards. You can wipe down the inside of your wallet every day. You can even use a little bit of moisture to sort of get the static out of there and just wipe off the dirt and maybe just give it a quick little brush, like very light, lightly dampened cloth. Uh, wipe down the inside and give it a light brush. You'll actually notice the luster will get a little brighter just from water and friction of the brush. That's if you're going to spend the effort to do it, that's what I would do. I don't like to spend any effort. <laughs> I like to see how it's just going to wear in. 
from time to time, things do happen where you get scuffs and scratches, and that's the time to start applying a neutral shoe polish. So we, for Shell Cordovan, we suggest the Saphir Cordovan cream. You can also always use the Venetian shoe cream or any other neutral colored shoe polish. You could, in that case of black shell, you could find a black polish. We like to sell people on the idea of neutral polishes because you can use it on everything and you don't have to spend all the money. You can just have like one neutral color and, and use it everywhere. We find it gets really good results. Great question. Mark, what's up, Mark? Mark says, hey, Phil, can you make a Bugs Marin with cash pocket outside like Tony the Ant? I much prefer the size of the Bugs and do not mind having it. So that's the first iteration that we ever did of the Tony was that actually it was always the larger size. We might be able to figure out something for you, Mark. Just hit my brother Matt up with the email to uh, info at ashenleather.com. We, we might have that for you. Bob Duncan, what's up, Bob? Says, I have a Tony the Ant in Dublin. Ordered a belt in Dublin. Also have Alden Indies and Chrome Excel and Cowhide. I have those same boots. And Grant Stones and Chrome Excel. I'm wearing those right now. And Veg. <laughs> You're right. My favorite depends on the application. It's tough. But that's the to me, that's kind of the fun part is you get to experience them all. And they're all different. It's I like playing guitar. And each guitar I have tends to have like a very naturally finished piece of wood. I like looking at walnut because it's dark. I, looking, I like looking at maple because it's light. I like seeing the grains in them it's different and I enjoy both of them. You don't have to choose one or the other. It's not a, uh, it's not like that. DJ 18 says, I'm thinking about a custom order with Tony the Ant and raw denim. Good choice. What do you think pairs well with the raw denim as an interior? We were just talking about interiors and how they wear, uh, how it sort of scuffs up itself. I really like reverse interiors and the shell cordovan. So if that was a wallet for me, I would do, a raw denim exterior with a reverse denim interior and get some extra dye spots. I think that would look really cool. Good question. Bob says, I don't have any shells. Seems too shiny and expensive. It's a, shells tough. I have only just recently received my first shell boots. I got a pair of shell cordovan boots from Viberg that I really like. The shells weird. It's super expensive but you're never going to find something that looks like that. So I'd say it's more about the aesthetics. If you like the vibe of how the shell looks, I can't suggest it enough. They're really cool. And it's going to keep that look for a long time, which is why people like it. So I'm looking at a pair of floor shine uh, long wings on the floor next to me here. And those are 40 year old pair of shoes that you just have to pop new soles on. The leather's going to kind of stay looking as it always was. And that's, that's why Cordovan has become what it is today is it's passed on generationally from people's grandfathers down to their grandsons because they've been able to keep those shoes in the family that long and they're still usable. So that's part of the beauty of, of shell. The thing is like you can get a Chrome Excel boot or even one of those, um, uh, that, uh, the, that sort of reddish color that Alden does on the four Oh fives those will last a long time too, but they're going to wear in and change a little bit more and perhaps get scuffed up in a different way where the shell kind of keeps its same look for a long time. That's a big difference. Quan says, is Horween and Wicked and Craig the same type of leather tannery or different? They're different. When I was working at Horween, we did have a program with Wicked and Craig where we would purchase the crust leather that was just tanned and retanned from Wicked, and then we would finish different finishes onto it. That wasn't a huge thing, but they're two separate entities. Wicked and Craig does a lot of veg. That's what they're known for, and it's beautiful stuff. They're located in Pennsylvania, and Horween is located two blocks away from me here in Chicago, but they're totally different companies. They're both great. They do different things. What are the pros and cons of Shell? We kind of been through that a bit, Jonathan. Sorry to... But I'd say the biggest pro of Shell is, is that the the retention of the luster and the lack of creasing to me, that's the biggest thing on a piece of footwear. I find shell cordovan to be the, the absolute best product or best material for a wallet, especially in a lighter color. Cause I like patina. So think about it this way. If you have a, a piece of natural shell in your pocket and you're walking around every day and every step you take is going to polish that leather. 
So if you like patina, I think the the Cordovan is like the best possible thing for a wallet. It's really expensive. That's the con. And I suppose the cons depend on your perspective, but as a leather crafter, it's very difficult to procure shell cordovan. They, it's hard to make. It takes them six months to produce it and they have a multi-year backlog of stuff. So it's difficult to get it. it it's nice to work with, uh, but it's a little nerve wracking too, because you're, you're holding a $300 bill in your hand. And if you cut it the wrong way, or if you gouge it out with a bevel the wrong way, uh, it's, it's a little scary and intimidating. So I'd say from the leather perspective, that's a con. It, it is a veg. So one con might be for moisture. Sometimes the rain will interact with veg in a way that you might not like. It, it can tend to change the color a bit, which I like. I actually like how my natural shell boots from Viberg have changed from putting a little moisture and polishing them. Some people might not want that. I've seen some instances where the shell seems to have a chemical reaction to the different acidities uh, in the water and it, it gives you like a little puff spots. You can often get those out with just a little bit of moisture and, and sort of polishing it like you would anything else. But the moisture really helps to even out water spots. I see people complain about that a lot. It will, it will scuff and scratch, but those scuffs and scratches are easily removed. So that's kind of a plus and minus. Hopefully that helps. Hydrophilic. Thank you. <laughs> Prasis177 says, purchased a natural Capone last week. Now I'm looking to get a darker Capone. Working on something. All right, cool. If there's something you want you don't see on the site, we can have pretty much anything made for you. So if you want a darker Capone, we can do cigar. It might take a little bit of time to get the, the shells in for that. But we can pretty much make most things happen if I can get my le hands on the leather. The other thing is again, next week and for the rest of July, we're going to start doing our 10 year anniversary, which we will have some really special Capone money clips and leathers that I've never seen before. Hydrophilic. Thank you for that, Andrew. Uh, Jonathan says, I wish everyone could see how my Amaretto Tony's wearing it. And it's incredible. I love Amaretto. Tobias says, the best leather is whatever Clint Eastwood's face is. <laughs> Andrew Wilkins says, nitro finished guitars are great for looking better over time too. I have a nitro finished uh, Gibson that I inherited. And yeah, it like gets this, this sort of like cracking in the finish, but in, in a, an interesting, pleasant way. I like that too. Jaron Elmeyer says, would you be able to get any more of the horse strip leather used in the private stock wallet a couple months ago? You'd have to remind me of that. I do have, I do have some horse strips in a box right there on the floor. Hold on a sec. Spill the beans here. Uh, this is something I wasn't planning to show. A few months ago, I went over to the tannery and picked up some some strips that Skip Horween was working on. These are veg tan horse strips that Skip is playing around with different experiments. This green is super cool. And this is thick enough to make a belt. I think that's what the plan is for this guy, is to make some sort of wacky green belt. It's really cool though. It's like a tumbled cool green. Really interesting depth to it. What's this? This is a color eight tumbled strip also, but this one's much thinner. So I'm not sure what strips you were referencing, um, but if you want, you can message me with like a screenshot of whatever it was. This one's really thin. I could probably make a wallet out of this. It's very soft too. Another weird tumbled strip. We just have leather sitting all over the place. <laughs> Um, Mash says, can, uh, can we get a sneak peek of 10 year items, please? All right. Uh, well, these aren't 10 year items, but these are like in the essence of 10 year that I'll show you in 10 seconds here. All right, cool. Let's actually do that right now. So I'll flip the camera around and I need to see what I'm doing. One sec. We got to 
flip you around. Get ready for it. Oh, then I also suppose I'll need to read chat. I'll put that over here. Rumble Star with a great question. Uh, Rumble Star says, "Is the polishing procedure the same for reverse shell as standard shell on your site? The polish reverse seems somewhat dull compared to standard. We do not polish the reverse shell unless it says hand glazed, and we have a special process that we do called hand glazing, um, where we do fill in the reverse side of the shell." with a different material. So you can finish them the same way, uh, but we don't. So here's the items that I wanted to show you. This is sort of reminiscent of what the tinier stuff is gonna be. Check that out. <laughs> you might even be able to see what's different about those card holders. I guess let's start off with this guy. So here we got something really neat. This just showed up to me and this is sort of the idea of what you're going to see from the tenure and this is obviously not even close to everything i think we have over 100 different items in many different styles but the idea of new designs with different leathers are what you're going to be seeing over the course of this 10 year celebration this month but check this out this is a card holder that has four card slots, or I guess three card slots, one, two, three card slots. And it has this, <laughs> we've never done this before. It's got this sort of like extra lip that sh it sort of highlights the rest of the card holder. And this is amaretto shell, and then it looks like a Western amaretto on the top card holder on both sides. That is so cool. I was really happy when uh, Lupe showed me these. Here's another one, same idea, but with color eight. Pretty cool. This, I don't know what leather this is. So this is what's gonna happen to me over the next month is I'm gonna keep getting leather handed to me and I'm not really gonna know what it is. This is like a, this is like a natural horse strip that was glazed and polished. And you can tell uh, by the grain character of it and I can kind of just tell by the feel of it. But also these bits of striations are very characteristic of horse hides, especially in horse strips. These little waves, you see that a lot on horse strips. God, that's cool. That's really neat. And then it looks like a black shell with a Western texture on the top. And we got different edge paints too for the black. That's really neat. This one's really cool too. Somebody was just talking about raw denim. So this is raw denim shell. Neat. So there's a little bit more of a matte finish on the raw dome. It does look a little bright and shiny in the video, but it's in person, it's more of like a matte finish. It kind of has like a, a strange, like futuristic look to it with this. This looks like a lizard, like a denim blue lizard texture on the top. That's pretty cool. Let's so get some hand stained edges. Very neat. So just the kind of concept there, something new that we've never done before. I'm having a hard time seeing chat. All right. Thanks, Prasis. So that's kind of the idea that you can expect to see over the next month. And again, like this is just a little taste. Oh, I forgot, speaking of little, this is a big taste. This is kind of even more so what you're gonna see and I've never seen this before until today. So this, <laughs> this is an Apple watch band made in two layers and we've got the new violet shell on the wrist side. So when you wear it, it'll be like this. So the part touching your wrist will be this new violet shell with this cool yellow stitching. I've always really liked how Lupe does the yellow and purple together, but this side is spectacular. Check out these pieces of shell. This is actually the shell cord of inside here. So this is like, this is kind of like making the shell cord of in, in the finishing process upside down. So they, if you could see, 
which you can't because it's folded over. The underside of this is all purple. So they finished it upside down on purpose. So you get the random die marks on the shell side. So it kind of looks like reverse shell, except it's on shell. In fact, you might be able to see it a little bit better here. See these die marks? That's kind of what they're going for. And this is all looks like reverse shell, but it's on the shell side. Super cool. And let's look at, um, oh yeah, we've got a lot of belts going out today. So I wanted to show you what the, I didn't do a video on these when I released it, but I really wanted to show you our brand new color eight Chrome Excel. So this is the color eight Chrome Excel belt. This is the first time we've released it this week. We might not have that many left. <laughs> a lot of people have been picking these up over the last 24 hours. Color 8 Chrome XL here is the same color as the Shell Cordovan, but just translated onto this leather called Chrome XL. These are made from extra thick 8 to 9 ounce pieces of leather. And it's got a really beautiful shade. The, the way that you can take a look at the color for Chrome XL is by looking at two things. When you don't flex it, you get a little bit of a darker surface color that's a little bit more of like a dark brown, but you can see where it's folded around the buckle side here. You reveal a little bit more of these undertones that are much lighter and more red and burgundy. That's really cool. I was noticing looking at the photos on our website that sometimes the color eight could kind of look brown. So I've got them both here to compare and contrast with you. In my left hand, this is brown Chrome XL, and on my right hand is the color eight. So it really kind of depends on what angle you look at it, but the burgundy color eight it is obviously more burgundy. It's just got a little bit more red to it. And then if you compare that sort of pull-up color, you can see the pull-up color on the brown here is much more like of a true brown where it's obviously more red on the color eight. And I noticed somebody in the chat said they picked up a Dublin belt and we do have Dublin belts back in stock now. Although again, like every time we put these up, they seem to sell pretty quickly. The sizing might be limited on these, but if you want to reserve a belt, if you see one that you want that we just don't have your size, just let us know when we can reserve the next available for you. And that's, that's no problem at all. So this is such a nice looking color. I'm actually wearing uh, the same exact belt right now and I love it. There's something magical about this, this color of the English tan when you pair it with like a denim, like on your jeans, it looks really good. And that's, I also find it to be really comfortable. That was one sort of unexpected thing about our belts that the people that were wear testing the first prototypes in these leathers, the comments and feedback I got was that they're really comfortable. And that was surprising to me because I kind of, I guess I've only worn Chrome Excel belts um, most of my adult life. So when they mentioned how comfortable this belt was, it surprised me. And I'm realizing that there's a big reason for it is most of the leathers from Horween, including the Chrome Excel here and the Dublin there, have this really interesting dynamic where it's firm and soft at the same time. It's very strange to say that out loud, but it's true. There's something sort of strange about most Horween leathers. They have like a nice bite to them while still remaining kind of supple. And, uh, and then when you get a grain character like this Dublin and then the color, like the English tan, uh, it sort of sets it over the top. So the comfort was something that really surprised me with how much people like the comfort of this. They're unlined, which I think also adds to it. So you don't get any extra stitching digging into you. You don't have the firmer backer leather of a belt to create an additional bit of temper and it reduced the, the way it's going to mold around you. I find the unlined belts and watch straps to be where it's at. All right, check this out. So I haven't looked at these yet, but these are some of the other items and wallets that we're gonna ship out today. And let's go through them real quick. Cause I gotta get cranking here. Check this out. <laughs> let's see what this guy is. Color number four, Shell Cordovan. Somebody was asking about color four. For a bunch of years, for about a decade, this was my favorite shell color. I love this medium brown with reddish undertones. It's stunning. And then you have a nice double reverse version here. And you can tell it's double reverse where you can see shell cordovan in reverse on both sides. So you got shell on top of reverse and then reverse on top of shell. That's why we call it double reverse. This was cut and clicked out in a really interesting way where they have this continuous Horween shell cordovan ink stamp through the center 
I think that's really nice. Oh, here's a tall, we were talking about the tall Herbie earlier, which is my new wallet. What's up, Nataku? I'm glad you made it, man. This is a tall Tony the Ant. So we don't have that additional thumb notch in the exterior bill slot of this wallet. And the light is really bright in my face, but this looks like whiskey shell cordovan, which is a little bit darker and more golden brown when compared to the natural shell. And this again is what I like about the tall versions of the Tony and the tall versions of the Herbie is you get a continuous same color throughout the inside. That's really beautiful. Here's another one. Looks like it's a, a duplication of the same one there. And here's another duplication of the color four. But it looks like we don't have the stamp going across the whole time. Aha, Fat Herbie. So here's a Fat Herbie. This is my current favorite wallet style, but I haven't worn the uh, haven't worn the tall Herbie yet. I have a little horse hair in the inside of it. There's something magical about a huge piece of leather. So that's why I like the Herbie. Is you get this incredible context of shell cordovan. And there's something about it. Even when we get pieces of shell, sometimes it feels dirty to like cut such a beautiful, huge thing. You lose a little bit of that context. And that's why I like a Herbie because you get to retain a bit of that still. Take a look at the inside too. More whiskey shell. When we started the company 10 years ago, whiskey shell Cordovan was the hotness. That's what everybody wanted from us. This is another whiskey shell Herbie. A little bit different uh, character on the back of this. And it actually looks a little bit more yellow. It's kind of neat. Every piece of shell cordovan, in fact, every, uh, or not every, most leathers from Horween are gonna range in color a little bit. And that's because most things there are hand finished and hand stained and they run them in small batches. So here we got another tall Tony the Ant in whiskey shell. It looks like color four or, oh, it's just a darker whiskey in the center here with that continuous ink stamp. Here's a double ink stamp. So each shell gets stamped one time with that Horween ink stamp and you get two here. So that means that we spent an entire extra, extra shell worth to cut this person two ink stamps. And usually we charge a little bit more for that. It's not, not the easiest thing to do. Here's another whiskey shell, tall Tony. Let's check out the striations on this guy. The green character in that, it's epic. This is like what we start to call the epic character on the shell where you get these like ripply wave looks. And this is something that the tannery does not have an ability to control. So it's kind of hard to, to order it, but we cut them like this when we can. Here's another Tony. We must've just gotten a whiskey shell batch in or something. That's why all these got made. This is a whiskey double reverse. Aha, here we go. Tall Tony the Ant in English Tan Dublin. So you get that huge context of Dublin, which is a great leather for context because there's so much variation. I like seeing a range of color in it. And then the inside too, you get that continuous look throughout the center and Dublin is really nice. I always forget to mention our edges, but we do a really nice job, or the team does a nice job on the edges. I'm like sort of the worst at most things here. Uh, they do a really good job of everything that we send out. Oh, here's a fun one, check this out. What is this? All right, so it looks like on the outside, denim blue shell on top of some amaretto shell. I really like the denim and amaretto together I think that's a great combo. And one of our most famous wallets that we've ever done was kind of like this, but with a hand stitch with like an orange tiger thread. And people lost their mind over that one. On the inside, it looks like we got some Kelly green Latigo. Yep, on the left and then the under slot on the right with Amaretto on top. That's a really interesting, interesting wallet. Kind of feels a little off balance on the inside. Oh, more whiskey shell. Here's a whiskey shell cordovan Frank the Enforcer. The thing to note about the shells is just how directional the colors are. So if you look at it at one angle, it's dark. And if you just spin it around, it changes color and gets lighter. And that's because the shells have a, a directionality to them. There's fibers in this leather that you can't see and you can't really feel either, but they point in a certain direction, just like you see on a suede. 
where if you rub the nap of a suede one direction, it will get lighter and you rub it back the other way, it'll get a little darker. It's, it's the same thing happening here on the shell cordovan. It's just that you can't feel it or see it. It's so small, those fibers. Here's another Frank the Enforcer in a really cool piece of reverse black shell cordovan. And people get confused by the reverse black because it's green. But the reverse side of the black shells, like if you look at the inside here, this is black shell. If you flip it backwards, this is what the reverse sides of the shells look like. And they do range from a light green tan to sometimes a little bit more of like a forest green. Here's what the reverse color eight looks like. Some cool die marks on this one. And the reverse color eight is a little bit more tan. Sometimes it can get a little bit more orange and sometimes a little bit more red. And one last guy, this looks like a, one of our coin pouches. So we make a lot of these little coin pouches for our Japanese friends. So this is a really beautiful piece. Is this, it's hard for me to tell with the light blasting in my face, but this looks like natural shell to me. It could be natural or like a really light whiskey. It's probably natural. Check out that shell though. And a lot of our wallets are flat pieces. So sometimes it's hard to see like this bit of luster because you don't have the shape of anything to look at. That's why I, I wish I had, I wish I sold, sold boots sometimes because it's so easy to take a beautiful shot of boots because of how the light hits all those curves. You're seeing that happen on this coin pouch here. So that's uh, coin pouch just sort of snapped open. Ooh, looks like we got a Horn measure machine, machine stamp for this one. That's kind of rare too. And then on the back, this is a card holder on the back of the coin pouch. So that's some of the wallets that we're sending out. I'm gonna flip the camera back around. Uh, flipping you around. All right. That's not everything we're sending. So if you, if you ordered a wallet yesterday afternoon or up until like early this morning, uh, yours probably is shipping out today. If it was an in-stock item. Oh, sorry. Let's focus. Aha. <laughs> so if you ordered anything off the site that was in stock, it's either shipping today or on uh, Tuesday now. But m there's a lot of stuff that's not in the video here that we're sending out. So don't be freaked out. And we have a lot of Chrome Excel belts. So if you ordered a Color 8 Chrome Excel belt yesterday, you're going to get it shipped today and you should have it by the middle of next week. I'm really excited for you guys to have those. They're really, it's a really nice piece of Chrome Excel too. Hey, Adam, I look forward to having that, man. Uh, coin pouch is, is uh, made to order only, but yeah, um, there's a few items that we don't have on the site, like the Louis Little New York or the Machine Gun Jack or that coin pouch. We have a passport holder that I didn't put up there. I'm starting to get worried and I might change my mind and like fix the website, but I was starting to get worried that we had too much stuff. So you noticed over the last two years, I've reduced our, our standard offerings, which is six colors. So we do black color eight and natural shell. We try to keep those in stock all the time, as well as natural Chrome Excel, English tan Dublin and black Dublin. We try to keep everything in stock of those six colors all the time. So you don't have to wait when you order something, I'm shipping it within a day. That's been a, a struggle, it's challenging to keep up with that, but that's what we're trying to do. So I felt like a strategy would be to reduce what we offer, as well as like clean up the website. There's something to be said, I think, for like when you go to a restaurant and they have a 10 page menu, it's really hard to choose what you want. And I thought we got to that point for our wallets. I think it was just too many options. So I tried to simplify it down as well as offer what we call a custom shop where you can order any style in any leather I have. You can customize the stitching. You can sort of request anything. I, I might say no to it, but uh, most things we try to do. So we're, we're opening that up. There's a little bit of an upcharge for that because it takes us longer to make one thing as opposed to a batch of things, as well as you pay for getting my brother's time or my time to work with you to find the perfect wallet or leather for you. We can send photos of things. In fact, we send photos of things from our stock too. 
which happens a lot. I like to encourage people that are picking up reverse shell pieces or marbled shell pieces to ask for a photo first because they're all so different. I can't put up a photo that represents all of them. I will try to, sh when I take photos of those types of items, I'll try to put up multiple items so you get a sense of how much it ranges. But the absolute best thing to do would be to let you pick from whatever we have and we, we do that happily. Yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a uh, one of my favorite restaurants here in Chicago. I'll tell this story and then I gotta wrap it up here. One of my favorite restaurants here in Chicago is called Kuma's Corner and they make insane burgers and they're all named after different metal bands so they'll just make wacky burgers like there's a burger called the slayer which is basically like a huge nasty plate of poutine with a burger plopped on top and then they like pour a bucket of chili on top of that with sausage it's so good but it's disgusting uh anyways i love it <laughs> but there's that plus 30 other insane burgers and I know I like the Slayer, but every time I go, I look at the menu and I can't choose something new because there's too many options and I, my brain goes, I want all of these, I, don't, I can't pick any of them. I do feel like we we're kind of getting that point uh, with wallets. So I think, you know, we'll add, we're gonna have more styles and we're gonna have, we have more wallets in development. We have some non-wallet products that are in development, but most, uh, most exciting coming up is the 10-year stuff. So look forward to, sign up to the newsletter. It's probably the best place to get updates on that. You can, you could almost hold me to this. I'm I'm like 99% sure I'll be able to launch something a week from today for 10-year and it's gonna be really nice. All the stuff is so crazy. So people that are into collecting different shells and getting one of, one of a kind pieces, that's where you're gonna wanna be on Friday. Uh, and I can't commit to a time right now. We'll see how it shakes out, but I'll, I'll be sure to give you as much notice as I can for when we're launching those. And again, the first place to see it is gonna be on our newsletter. The second place is probably right here. I've been trying to do um, previews of things on YouTube um, when we launch unique things, especially because you can't really capture these leathers in a still photo. You kind of have to look at it in person. But everybody that's here, thank you guys so much. Uh, oh, the Yob. Yeah. Yeah, dude, Kuma's Corn is great. Jurgen says, looking hard at the Fat Herbie in number four, but man, the marbled stuff, marbled. If you like unique, get marbled and ask me to send you a photo. We'll send you photos. But uh, everybody that's been here, Andrew, Jurgen, AKS Minster, Adam, Enrico. Sorry, I missed your question, Enrico. Can you make a custom bugs with card slots on the outside? Yes, we can. We've done it, and it's great. That's a really good idea. Nataku, thank you. Prancis, Rumblestar, Jarden, Jarin, Maj, uh, Tobias, Andrew, Jonathan, Quan, Bob, DJ, Mark, Mojo, Mojo from Navajo Nation. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me, and uh, thank you guys for supporting us. It, I. I had this property damage at my house over the last weekend and uh, it made me realize how much I appreciate you guys supporting us because uh, you know that I, this is the only money I make. <laughs> so, you know, it's not just me either. We have nine employees here at Ashland and you're supporting all of us. Um, you know, our personal lives you're supporting, which is very meaningful, but as important, maybe not more important is you're helping support us trying new stuff. We're working really hard with Horween to try to make as many exciting new things as we can. And that costs money. So when you buy these things, that gives me ammo to show up to the tannery and say, people really liked the X, Y, Z psychedelic shell. Why don't you try to do that again? And you can help fund these things become a reality. So, Things like the psychedelic shell, I think you're gonna to start to see, uh, Skip was telling me today, he's getting better and better at it. So, and that's only happening because the reaction that we had from these videos and the uh, support from you guys buying it. It's, it's one thing to say, oh, I like that. And it's another thing to put your hard earned dollars towards it and support it uh, and doesn't, uh, I, I think about that all the time. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great 4th of July too. And uh, I'm excited for next week. So I'll see you next week and have a good weekend.